to say it's not long after six, but it's about quarter past six. Um, and it's dawn on Easter morning. And this is from my garden. Uh, I can't this too much because I wasn't quite sure whether uh, whether it would kind of happen, as you can see. I really to do something this time. Probably this is a time where I uh, get up and go up to Barbara Castle, like for a dawn service on Easter Day. Obviously, that's not possible today, so um, I've travelled a vast distance down the stairs and out into my garden. Um, this is just a short reflection uh, used in my old, no ordinary man book again um, before the the main service later. I'm not expecting anybody to see this. I'm not expecting anybody to join um, because I don't think anyone's going to know about it. But um, you might be able to catch it. Perhaps you might be able to catch it later. Um, cats here. Um, various birds you might be able to hear as you go along. Um, uh, pigeons mainly, but also there are some sparrows around somewhere. And uh, I've seen a couple of wrens as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's always nice at this time of the morning. Say it's just after six. To leave the dawns about six o'clock ish. Maybe something like that. But let's pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To you be glory and praise forever. Your steadfast love extends to the heavens, and your faithfulness never ceases. Illuminate our hearts with your wisdom and strengthen our lives with your word, for you are the fountain of life. In your light we see true light. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Good morning, Sue. Happy Easter. Um, well done. <laughs> here's, a, here's a reading from Mark's Gospel, Mark 16, um, beginning to read at the first verse. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, and very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered, sorry, it's the cat. <laughs> As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is, there is a place. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb. For terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's uh, another meditation from um, some from Salome's point of view. You'd have thought pleased, wouldn't you, over the moon at the news that he had risen. And we were, later, once we finally took it all in. But at the time, it wasn't pleasure we felt. It was sheer and adulterated fear. Can you blame us? I don't think so. For it's not every day you find a tomb empty, is it? Not often you go to anoint a body only to find it disappeared. Yet that sort happened to us. Early that morning, the dew still wet on the grass, mist still rising, the three of us making our way to the tomb, suspecting nothing, 
expecting nothing, simply going to pay our last respects. It was shock enough finding the stone rolled away, our stomachs lurching at the sight of it. And when we finally plucked up the courage to look inside, we did not find Jesus, but this man we didn't know from Adam. Well, we could scarcely suppress a scream. Who was he? Why was he here? Why was he there? What did he want? And most important of all, where had he taken our Lord? The questions crowded in upon us, our minds reeling in confusion. He may have been calm, but we weren't. We felt faint with disbelief, dizziness growing by the second, wanting only to get out and get as far away as possible. So when he told us to go back to the disciples, believe me, we were only too happy to oblige. Did we tell them what we'd seen? Well, what do you think? Would you have done? We knew all too well the response we'd get. Our words dismissed as so much nonsense. And that's just what happened. When they finally forced us into it, for a try as we might, we simply couldn't hide our confusion. We weren't just scared, we were terrified, trembling as though we'd seen a ghost, and with good reason, for we honestly thought that we had. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we forget sometimes the sheer wonder of your resurrection. We've heard the accounts so often that we fail to appreciate the enormity of what took place and the effect it had. You were dead and buried, your body sealed in a tomb. For your followers, that was it, the end of a glorious dream. When the women went to anoint the body, to anoint your body, they expected nothing more than to perform the last act of love. But the tomb was found empty, your body gone. The grave clothes discarded there, the only sign of where you had lain. And for a time, it was too much to take in. The women returned in shock. Mary broke down in tears. The apostles laughed in derision. For by all human reckoning, it simply could not be. Only it was. You had broken the hold of death, turned the world upside down, transformed the cost of history in one magnificent moment. Lord Jesus Christ, we celebrate today your victory over death. Give us the same sense of awe and wonder felt by those who first learned the truth. Come alive in our minds so that our minds too will reel in wonder and our spirits dance in joyous celebration to the glory of your name. Amen. two people. Fantastic. Thank you for um, for joining me. I think it, it is a wonderful morning in which everything is based really on what we believe and it's where we find our hope. Um, we'll have a service later at 10 o'clock um, together. The Archbishop's in his ki kitchen at 9 o'clock. So um, I might join that just to just to kind of uh, prepare for our service as well but I do pray that you will feel that eat those Easter blessings this day the day that we celebrate Jesus resurrection Jesus coming to life coming back to life defeating death and offering a hope for us all let's pray again eternal God who made this most holy night and this most holy dawn to shine with the brightness of your one true light. Set us aflame with the fire of your love and bring us to the radiance of your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I look forward to... Um, for us being together a little bit later when I might have even brushed my hair by then um, and I'd certainly be better dressed. So God bless you and keep you this wonderful Easter morning.